This is Dan Limmer, Chief Pathologist at Limmer Creative. I'm here with the third of three questions that we displayed in our booth at the National Association of EMS Educators Conference in Fort Worth, Texas. It's been a great experience, and if you've been watching our videos right along, I'm glad you're back for this. And if this is the first one you've seen, go back and look for the first two videos. Each one is a little bit different, and there's some great points in each. So this question, the most reliable method to assess the effectiveness of your ventilations is to observe the, and our four choices are, rise and fall of the chest, improvement in the SpO2 readings, color of skin in small capillary beds, and improvement in the level of consciousness. So as I watched educators look at this question, there were three terms that they really picked up on. There was most reliable, there was effectiveness, and ventilations. Now. What they really came down to was one term more than others, and that is ventilations. Because the concept of ventilation is moving air in and out of the chest. That's what ventilation is. We ventilate patients, and that's the, the concept of moving air in and out of the chest. So therefore, the rise and fall of the chest is the correct answer in this. And as you can see, uh, an overwhelming majority of the educators chose that as the correct answer. Now. Just because it seemed like an easier question doesn't mean that there aren't some really good teaching points here. I think that if a student were to look at this and they didn't look at the word ventilations and they thought generally overall oxygenation and they thought about most reliable or effectiveness, they might look for a high-tech answer like uh, you know oximetry readings or look for something else. But when you know what you're measuring, the ventilations, the rise and fall of the chest clearly rose above, and we can see that here. So how does this translate for our students? How do we make sure our students get a question like this correct? And I think that it would really be a shame if our students missed this, because I don't think it's one of the more difficult questions out there. And what do we do as educators to help them? Well, there's two things I'd like to, like to pitch for you. One is to make sure that when you teach and when you test, that you use proper terminology, that you are clear, and that they have had the experience of, of differentiating between ventilations and respiration somehow. The other thing is I think this highlights the continued need for educators at the EMT level, because this is an EMT level question, to teach foundational pathophysiology in the beginning of the class and follow it up throughout in your subsequent classes so students really know pathophysiology. And if that's the case, with some good reading, just like the educators we met in Fort Worth, your students will also get this question correct. Again, I'm Dan Limmer. I'm the Chief Pathologist at Limmer Creative. We do apps that make students, and as you can see here, sometimes educators think and be the best prepared that they can be. Thanks for watching.